Throughout our course, we're going to see lots of word problems that use geometry. So in this section, what we want to do is get a really good base for the formulas and how to use them and apply them to some different scenarios. So in this video, we're going to focus on area and perimeter of various polygons. Our first one here is a square. And for each of these, we're going to look at two formulas, perimeter, which is the distance along the outside of the shape, and then area, which we can talk about in terms of square units, which is the space taken up by the inside of the shape. Okay, so let's say we have our square here and it has all equal sides. If we want the perimeter, we just take four times the side length. So whatever the side length is, it's like we're adding it up to itself s plus s plus s plus s which is just four times s and then for area you just take s times s which would be s squared so for example let's say we had a shape and one of the sides of the square was two inches then if we wanted the perimeter we would just take four times two which would be eight and then our units for perimeter stays the same so it would be eight inches for area we would take two times two which is four and for area you should have a squared units so it'd be four square inches the idea being you can count up that we would have these four squares inside okay rectangle similar shape but we're going to have different side lengths um, so we're going to have width and length then we have width and length for perimeter we take two of the widths plus two of the lengths and then for area we multiply length times width so let's say this was a two by five and also let's get some units let's say this was centimeters so for perimeter we would take two times the width plus two times the length so a four plus ten so 14 centimeters and then for area we would take two times five which is ten and that would be square units so centimeter squared all right for triangles for perimeter we just add up the side lengths that's the general rule just some of them have nice formulas to them but with this we would just depending on what the shape is just go around the outside to add up the side lengths for area we take one half times the base times the height so you might see this in a few different formats it could be base times height divided by two you could also see one half times base times height all the same formula now the height is a perpendicular so it makes a right angle with the base of the triangle so we're going to recognize the base and then like in this case it's a right triangle so we would have the height and base with this which is a non right triangle we would have to recognize the base and then drop down a perpendicular to visualize the height and then this is just a special case where the height would be outside of the triangle so for example let's say let's say this is a three four five triangle and let's say this is inches so for perimeter we just add them up three plus four plus five which will be 12 and then we'll have units of inches for area we'll take one half times base times height notice we don't use the five in there so let's see that'll be a 12 divided by two so six and then that'll be square inches okay these next ones we won't see too often but why not cover them while we're talking about it so a parallelogram has pairs of parallel sides so those two sides are parallel and then the other two sides are parallel to each other. Um, in terms of base, along the bottom here is going to be the base of our shape. And then the height of the parallelogram, similar to the triangles up above, would be us dropping a perpendicular. So that would be our height. 
So for perimeter, we just go along the outside of the parallelogram and add up the side lengths. For the area, we just take base times height. Um, and nothing else to do there. And it's really because this is a rectangle in terms of area. If you imagine cutting out that triangle there and moving it over here, it would make this really nice rectangle with base and height being the width and length. Okay, so for example, let's say that side length is 10, let's say this side length is 5, and let's go ahead and just say that the height is 3. Sorry, I'm <laughs> just making it up. Okay, so in terms of perimeter, we'd go along the outside, so we'd have a 10 plus a 5 plus another 10 plus another 5. So 20 plus 10 is 30. Ooh, and let's do units of meters. So that would be 30 meters. And then for area, we would take 10 times 3, which is 30. And this would be square meters. Okay, last one here is the trapezoid. So again, for perimeter, we would just go along the outside and add them up. Um, in terms of area, we're going to have two bases. We're going to call, and it actually the order doesn't matter at all, but the sides that are parallel to each other are going to make base one and base two. So these two side lengths are parallel, so those will be, able to be our two bases, whereas those side lengths aren't part of the base. And then for height, we're looking again at that perpendicular that's dropped, so this would be our height. So let's say we have seven centimeters, five centimeters, two centimeters, three centimeters, one centimeter. Okay, so for perimeter, we'd go along the outside. So a seven plus two plus five plus three. So let's see, a nine plus eight. So 17 centimeters. And then for area, what we're going to have is one half. I'm actually going to write it as a fraction. One half times the height, which I said is one, times the addition of the two bases. So seven plus five. So it's going to be a 12 times one divided by two. So that's going to be six square centimeters. Okay. So there's some different scenarios there. Now let's talk about circles. So with circles, perimeter just has a special name of circumference. So if you're asked to find the per perimeter of a circle, it's really meaning the circumference. And with a circle, we're going to have some different terminology. So one piece is going to be the radius, which goes from the center of the circle to the outside of the circle. So this is called the radius. We also have the line that goes through the center of the circle that goes straight across. That is called the diameter. And the diameter should be equal to two times the radius. It's twice as long. And then a value of pi is going to be coming up. So two ways to calculate the circumference. You either take two pi r, or the diameter times pi. Those are the same equation since 2r is equal to diameter. And then for area, we take pi r squared. Okay, so let's go through some examples here. So let's say we have the circle and we can see it has a diameter. So we wanna make sure that we recognize that that is a diameter of 7.85. So if I wanted to find the circumference, all I need to do is take pi times 7.85. So what we could do is go ahead and take 7.85 times pi, which is 24.66. Let's go ahead and just go to two decimal places. 24.66, and this is a distance just like perimeter, so units of feet. And then for area, we're going to take pi times, but we need the radius. So for radius, 
I need half of that distance, so I'm going to take 7.85 divided by 2 to get the radius out, which is 3.925. Let's go ahead and keep that nice and accurate here. So we're going to take pi times 3.925 squared. Okay, so we're just going to plug all that in. So we're going to have pi times 3.925 squared. And make sure the pi doesn't get squared, it's just the radius. So 48.4. And this would be units squared, so square feet. Okay, with this shape here, they're giving us the diameter again. And what we want to recognize is that this is a half circle. So for my calculations, I want to pay attention to the fact that it is a half circle. So for circumference here, and actually not circumference, this is going to be perimeter because what we're going to have is that half circumference of the circle plus this is part of the outside too. So we're going to be adding 15 on. So what I'm going to do is take pi times 15, but I need to cut that in half because I only have a half circle. So that takes care of this top piece. And then I'm going to add on 15 for that distance along the bottom of it. And I'm just going to plug all of that into the calculator. So, pi times 15, cut that in half, and then add on 15 for 38.56. And our units here were centimeters. For area, we're going to take pi r squared. So again, we need to cut this in half. So 15 divided by 2, which should be a 7.5. And with that, we'll have pi times 7.5 squared. And then because we have a half circle, divide it by 2. So pi times 7.5 squared divided by 2 for 88.36. and that'll be square centimeters. All right, so there's some examples with circles, and let's go ahead and just finish this off with a little word problem here. So we have the perimeter of a rectangular outdoor patio is 54 feet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a little rectangle here for our patio, which with rectangles we have width and length, and what we know is that this is our perimeter of 54 feet. The length is three feet greater than the width. So how about instead of having two different variables, instead of L, I'm gonna take width and add on three feet. What are the dimensions of the patio? So what we should have here is we know perimeter comes from two times width plus two times length, and we know that that perimeter is equal to 54. So with that, we get an equation that we can solve. So 2w plus 2w plus 6. And let's see, subtract 6 from both sides, so that'll be a 48 equals 4w. Divide by 4 to get 12. So our dimensions, we're going to have 12 by 15. So the dimensions are, and let's see, our perimeter was in feet, so that's going to be each of the lengths as well. The dimensions are 12 feet by 15 feet. And then for the area, we're just going to multiply those two values together. together. So the area is 12 times 15, which is 180. 180, and that will be square feet.